All right, I'm back. So, Paul, I've been thinking. Aren't we basically about to investigate a civil infraction? I mean, aside from the cyborg that we just met, we're going to go investigate a leasing contract and some kind of medical testing deal. Is that another job for the FBI? Or the FDA? Or, or the somebody? Nah. In the far-flung future, the FBI's got more important things to worry about. Like, uh, aliens. Self-aware androids, I guess. I bet they'd investigate the nice neighborhood. The nice neighborhood has lawyers, Lowry. Maybe we can get the abominations to wander into the nice neighborhoods and pee on their lawns and stuff. And then that'll get the FBI in, and then we can go take a nap. I like the way you're thinking, Elvis. Well, Mason, that does sound like a pretty typical way for this group to end a campaign. Look, Paul, if you're telling me that there's a dragon terrorizing the country, the question I'm gonna ask is, why does the king only hire three dudes, and then why does he hire another three dudes who compete with us and piss us off at every turn? Well, you guys were independent contractors that game. You made a bid to kill the dragon, and then a second group came in and bid underneath you. I'll consider it worked out pretty well in the end. Elvis, you guys abandoned the job, then managed to find a way in the Fey Court in the mistaken belief that the Fey Court was a court of law. And it wasn't at first. Royalty does have the authority to make judgments, Paul. That king should have known better. You mess with adventurers, and sooner or later they level up enough to ask the gods for revenge. Yeah, and I don't hate the way that campaign turned out. I just didn't expect that the other team would claim the kill, and then you guys would get paid anyway on the basis of damages and emotional suffering. We had to jump through a lot of hoops to rig that case. It was an adventure in paperwork. We didn't really do any paperwork. We disqualified the king's lawyer for sewer service. Which is funny, because we were the ones who served the lawsuit. I think that guy was the chancellor or something, wasn't he, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, he helped organize the city sewers, so the Fae all agreed that guy was dirty. I just think where I went wrong is, I tried to set up a traditional Slay the Dragon campaign, and this is just not the right group. It was a great campaign, though, Paul. I mean, even if all the plans you started with sucked. So anyway, we've met this cyborg. Yes, indeed. You went to investigate a murder, the murder victim burst into tentacles, somebody blamed the landlord, and this apparently unkillable cyborg was at the scene. So anyway, dude, I was about to go down to that guy's office and, like, hang him off the rooftops. You know, like Batman? And he'd be all like, no, please don't kill me, man. It was the penguin that did it. It's almost never the penguin. Nobody likes the penguin. He's not cool. Well, the Joker wouldn't do weird medical experiments on people, dude. That doesn't make any sense. Maybe it's funny if you know why he's doing it. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe it becomes a joke if you figure it out. Oh, uh, this guy came in on a motorcycle and he's just... Holding it and walking around with it now, right? That's correct, Lowry. Okay, does it have a license plate? It does! I rolled to check what state he's from. Is this a local plate? Oh, I failed by three. It is a local plate. So you're from out of town, are you? Huh? Why? Do you guys not get Batman cartoons around here? Wait. I mean, no, we wouldn't, because, like, Batman should be public domain by now, right? Yeah, man. All the cartoons are available for free now. I stream them from some website. I don't know why, but that feels weird to me. Ask Dispatch to run this guy's license plate. Yeah, Officer Lowry, it looks like this plate belongs to a Bartholomew Molyneux. He's the son of Google Molyneux, the current owner of Google. The owner of Google changed his first name to Google. Yeah, it's all the rage with company owners these days. Like how the owner of Johnson & Johnson changed his name to Johnson Johnson, middle name Ampersand. Isn't Google a subsidiary of Alphabet? Shut up, Elvis. So, Flat Top, what's your real name? Uh, John... Johnson? You mean like the owner of Johnson & Johnson? Never heard of him, man. So, hey, Mr. Johnson, you were saying you wanted to help us interrogate the landlord, right, Mr. John Ratberg? Where did John Ratberg land? Elvis, we figured that out already. You were the one who looked it up? Oh, right. Well, anyway, Johnson, we're gonna head down there soon, but we need a little bit more evidence gathering before we spring the trap. Is that gonna be okay? Oh, I guess, man. We don't want the trail to go cold, though, do we? Well, that's the thing about police work, see? Sometimes the trail goes colder if you move too fast. I tell you what, meet me by the gas station down the block tomorrow at around this time, and we're all gonna be ready. All right, man. I guess you guys are the cops after all. Y'all think of the questions I want answered, and then, uh, maybe I'll get a grappling hook and some rope and stuff for the rooftops. All right, you do that. Okay, see you guys tomorrow. And away he goes, walking down the road, cradling his motorcycle in his arms. Elvis, can you look online and find a Bartholomew Molyneux? You got it, Lowry. I passed by one. He's the son of Google's owner. You find him on Facebook. Pull up the page source code. I've hacked him, guys. There he is. Where is he, Paul? 
His primary residence is uptown in a big mansion. Of course, he's got dozens of other homes in other countries and a sprawl of Airbnb rentals. Man, investigating the rich sucks. They got overseas accounts, foreign addresses, lawyers. This all sounds complicated. I bet we could get just as good credit for arresting a poor person and saying that they did it. We owe it to ourselves to be better cops than that, Mason. Officer Lowry, are you not the cop who cried openly during every coffee break? You make such a scene, and it is so embarrassing, and you want to talk about the dignity of the force. I do it every day, and you never ask what's wrong. That is not true. I asked one time, and it turned out you were sad because someone posted a TikTok video where a dog died. Oh. Well, that was a one-time thing, and that was legitimately sad. Usually I'm thinking about the state of society. That is bullcrap and you know it. Name me one thing you know about society. I know lots of things about society, Mason. For example, I know that rent is too expensive. And how would you fix it, Lowry? You asked for one thing and I gave you one thing. How dare you escalate to demanding two things? How do we fix that anyway? Rent is too expensive. My parents are trying to get me to move, but I feel like I can't find a better situation than living rent-free with my parents. The rent situation is like zero value added to what I'm at right now, but with more cost. There's privacy. Privacy is just another word for loneliness. Do you guys want roommates? Uh, I already have one. Actually, wait, do you do dishes? No. Then no. I like to turn the lights off and sit in silence, so you'd really harsh the vibe. Well, I guess we're never going to solve the rental problem. So anyway, does this Bartholomew Molyneux kid look anything like the guy we just tried to arrest? No, he does not. Ah, heck. Maybe he is a poor person after all. He just stole that motorcycle. Do we have a stolen vehicle bulletin or anything? Not for one of those motorcycles. Those are pretty rare. And also, that one was modified with technology that civilians can't normally get. Alright. Uh, Elvis, could you do a reverse image search on that guy's face or something? Uh... You don't have any images of that guy. He's still walking home, right? Yep, he was last seen on foot carrying a motorcycle. Run after him. Hey, hey, uh, Flat Top, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, I'm really excited to be working together. Could we get a selfie for my scrapbook? He turns around. Uh, yeah, sure, man, cool. So we're really doing this, huh? Yeah, we're doing it like peas in a pod. Take the picture. Jeez. Okay, and one more from the side. Profile view, please. All right, man. Like, look away like I'm thinking about something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like an album cover. Okay, cool. Okay, and one more from the front, just for safety. All right. Hey, can I see him? Sure. You photograph really well. You're a lot taller than me, though. Yeah, it's crazy hard getting used to, man. I'm, like, way up here. Okay, see you tomorrow, bud. And now you have your photos. All right, reverse image search. Pass by two. You can find one public photo at the birthday party of some kind of social media porn star. He's wearing a fake mustache. Just one photo? What's the name on this? He appears in the magazine as Roger McRoger, and the magazine lists him as the best dressed at the party. Alright, bring up the source code. Show it to Mason. This is all the hacking I could do, sir. The man's a ghost. Based on the graphic nature of this party, I'd say he's not in a shell. That is an excellent reference to a cartoon that came out presumably over a hundred years ago, sir. Thanks, Elvis. I'm glad you understood it, because for the time period this is, it is rather dated. Given his illegal weapons, I'd say he's a ghost in the shell, standalone complex, first assault recon online, Officer Mason. Okay. You've totally lost me. It was a game based on the Ghost in the Shell franchise, sir. It also wasn't very successful, which makes it far less likely you'd understand what I'm talking about. But I just thought it was funny the title was so long. Let's try and stay focused on the task ahead of us. Right. Paying rent. Not that far ahead. I meant more in the immediate, before our shift ends future. Well, heck, I guess we'll just drive uptown to the Google Mansion. It's not really in your jurisdiction. Neither is Lowry's mom! But that didn't stop me from sending her flowers on her birthday. Lowry, she asked about you. You don't understand. I can never get off the phone with her. Well, all right, we're going uptown. If another cop asks, tell him that we're lost, uh, and that we're also chasing a poor person. Hang on, let me get a cover story. Call up Dispatch. Dispatch, we are in hot pursuit of a poor person. Over. A poor person? You have a description? Yes. The car's all beat up, and they're probably some kind of ethnic minority, and they don't have a lawyer. What kind of car are they driving, Officer Elvis? Tell him a sprint car. A sprint car, with big old mud flaps and a bumper sticker that says, I heart alcohol. Any information on why the pursuit? I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out when we arrest him. Roger that. You're authorized to use lethal force. Okay, that's airtight. I guess we'll go uptown. Sure, you head on up to the nice part of town. 
Basically, it's a lot of rolling farmland and rural stuff, with yards separated by increments of miles. That sort of country living has a lot of appeal for the upper society in your cramped city world. So when we pull up to the mansion, is there like 100 acres of rolling fields between the fence and the front door? Yeah, and some wooded stuff between that. Ugh. Okay, maybe this will work. Ring the fence doorbell. You hear an answer through an intercom. Good afternoon. Do you have an appointment? Uh, no. This is the police. We're in hot pursuit of a poor person. We think he jumped the fence and ducked off into the woods in your yard. I see. Well, not to worry. The automatic security drones will find him and incinerate the body. Oh. Okay. Well. It's my understanding that murdering trespassers is permitted within the law. I mean, I'm sure it is. But we really wanted to give this guy a fine. The department depends on those tickets, you know. Our department does? Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously not like a department in a bad part of town would, but you know, we have a quota. We're supposed to ticket a certain number of drunk driving cases and stuff to remind people that there are police out here. It was in the city council meeting. I don't know if you were there. Give me persuasion, Mason. Pass by two. Well, I suppose if it will help you meet your quota, there's no harm in powering down the murder drones for an hour or so. Thanks, boss. It really means a lot. The gate opens up. Okay, drive in. So, listen up, guys. Gotta get in that mansion and find Bartholomew Molyneux, and then... Uh... I don't think we can arrest him if we don't have evidence he did a crime. Shoot. Uh, I should have asked if his motorcycle was stolen. If he was guilty, he's just gonna lie anyway. This is fine. Yeah, except now we're here impersonating cops from another jurisdiction, and I don't know for sure what we're doing. I thought I'd have a plan by the time we got in, but I didn't expect they'd just let me in. Well, let's just go with your first instinct, Mason. All right. Uh, okay, I guess just go park the car outside, get out and start walking around the building. Is there a garter or anything out here? Well, you work night shift, remember? But yeah, there's a custodian or something working in the yard. Okay, walk up to him. Hey, dude, uh, I was wondering, do you happen to know where Bartholomew Molyneux is right now? He goes, uh, I guess I could get one of the butlers for you. No, no, uh, don't do that. See, I think he did a crime, but I kind of lied to get in here. So I was hoping I could just climb through one of the windows and, like, catch him doing the crime. And I think he's doing the crime right now. Oh, really? Are you allowed to do that? Well, I don't think so. Unless he's doing a crime. See, because there's rules about probable cause and stuff, but I kind of skipped some of that training. So look, look, uh, just from one working stiff to another, I don't suppose you could help me out. Give me another persuasion roll. Fast by one. The guy goes, well, I guess it is good to see the Molyneux family being held accountable for anything. I didn't think the police ever investigated them. Yeah, that's usually more of an FBI thing. And then there's never quite enough crime to justify court case. Anyway, can I borrow your ladder? Uh, sure, I'll get one from the shed. We really are gonna get slaughtered in court, though. They're gonna look up our past history and everything, and it is not gonna look good. See, this is the problem with police by humans. Of course, no cop is gonna be perfect. Climb up the ladder, look through the window. Do I see anybody? Yeah, you see a scruffy young guy sitting in a beanbag chair. There's police action film posters all over the walls. He's wearing some kind of VR helmet. So anyway, I mean, like, People make mistakes all the time, and in the heat of the moment, it can be really hard to make a good judgment call. Smash the window with my nightstick. The glass explodes into sharp fragments. The guy shouts, Whoa! Is someone there? There's a pause, and he takes off his helmet and turns around. Whoa! Step inside. You cut your legs up on the glass. Oh, jeez. You could have just knocked, man. Think I'd fall for that? You know why we introduce no-knock warrants? It's because criminals always destroy the evidence. You think I'd give you a chance to flush yourself down the toilet? Huh, perp? I, I know what you're talking about, man. Where's your I... motorcycle, dude? I noticed your little cherry red beauty isn't in the garage, because I checked. Oh, it's, it's, it's out getting some maintenance, man. No, it isn't. Elvis, get up here. All right, climb the ladder. Okay, you cut up your legs coming in. Oh, jeez. Elvis, show him what we got on his motorcycle. Pull up a picture of his motorcycle from, like, Google Images or something and turn on the source code. Show it to him. I hacked this. We got your number, Mr. Molyneux. Whoa, guys. All right, look, I'm not the bad guy here, okay? Well, we'll let the judge be the the uh, arbiter of that decision. I played the fifth, man. That means you can't make me testify. Drag him to the window. All right, perp. I'm going to need you to be really careful because there's broken glass everywhere. Lowry, come up here. Help me pick this guy up and, and get him over the glass so he doesn't get hurt. All right. So here you're going to... Dude, dude. 
We could just go out the front door. It's, it's no. fine. I'll go. The front, I, door, the front door isn't cool. I really wanted to throw you out the window and have Lowry catch you, but then he wouldn't do it right and you'd both get hurt. Oh, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, well, I could have Jeeves put out a crash pad. Really? You got a crash pad for this sort of thing? Well, not for this specifically, dude, but I really like action film, so I got a bunch of props and special effects stuff. Do you want to blow up my room while we leave? Yeah. Yeah, I do. How, how long is that going to take? They said they're going to reactivate the death robots in a couple of hours. Oh, it won't take long, man. I got people. Just hold down that button on the wall. I succeed by six to tell if he's lying. Pa, is he lying? Elvis, we have been over this. Shut up, Elvis. Don't ruin this for me. Push the button. Yeah. Hey, Jeeves? Yes, sir. Could you set the crash pad down below my window and rig up my room to explode? Maybe set up a camera while you're at it, too, man. Of course, sir. Man, arresting rich people is cool. Only when you arrest the cool ones like me, man. Uh, if you arrested my dad, it'd just be a boring walk to the car. Then he'd have your family killed or whatever. Well, joke's on you. I don't really have a family. Me either. I'd feel worse if you gave me a family. All that pressure to succeed. I love my family. Please don't hurt them. No, you guys are cool. I'm cool. Don't worry about it. And much quicker than you'd expect, the small crew rushes in, rigs up a bunch of explosives, and then throws out a crash pad below the window. It's almost like they've done this before. Sir, may I ask who these men are? The butler inquires. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are some cops. I'm being arrested, Jeeves. Very well, sir. A crew member approaches you guys and says, All right, we're going to give you a signal. When we do, jump. And then we're going to light it up on the way out. Are you ready? Yeah, I guess. Do I jump too? Yeah, it's going to be a real explosion, so don't stay in here. Otherwise, we got to cancel it and reset the shot. Okay, so we all jump together. Got it. Larry, are you going to come up and jump? No, I'm good. Get in position. We're ready. They give you the signal. Leap out the window. The room explodes cinematically behind you, and what you have to assume is a pretty cool shot. You land safely on the crash pad below. Wow! Best arrest of my life! I gotta do that again! <laughs> I know, man. But they gotta rebuild my room before we do that. Hey, when we're taking you out of here, do you think we could do, like, a car chase down the road? Heck yeah, man! Jeeves! Get the crew! Have them get in the... Uh... He looks at your car. Looks like we're doing a retro thing. Get some of the older banged up cars. Can I see the footage on our jump? Sure. It looks pretty awesome for a single take and the fact you've never done this before. Is there any chance I could get a copy of that shot for my wallet? This looks great. Can I just have the whole footage? I gotta show my parents when I get home. The crew explains they'd love to, but the copyright is technically held by Google, so you gotta go through some legal avenues. Molyneux goes, Yeah, man, sometimes we sell this stuff as stock footage and whatever. I'll totally hook you up, but it'll take a day or two. Then they get you ready for a car chase, and they follow you all the way down to the street, shooting blanks and stuff at you. One of the drivers rolls his car over, but it looked intentional. The light and sparks and bullets bouncing off the car and post, man. It's pretty cool. All right. Pull off the road and start heading down to the station. Hey, man, where are we going? We gotta get back, you know? What? I thought you were under arrest. What? Were you serious about that? Yeah. You're some kind of illegal, remote-controlled cyborg. That's not a crime. Allegedly? And even if it were, I didn't do it. Allegedly? Really? Because it was a super cool robot, and I was hoping to team up with it. Oh, you had me going, man. Well, yeah, that was me. I mean, you really had me worried. Aha! It was a trick, and now you just admitted that you're an illegal remote-controlled cyborg. Oh, man, you got me with cop psychology. Dang it. Oh, I should have known better. So cool, but such a bummer. Also, uh, I talked to my lawyer before, and he said it's not illegal to have a remote-controlled cyborg. Pal, I succeed by three to know if this guy's lying. Elvis, you can't think of a law in the books that says a remote-controlled cyborg is illegal. Unless it flies, in which case he has to register with the FAA. Hey, Bart, can your robot fly? No, man, I wish. I tried to get him to put rocket boots in it, but they kept telling me stuff about, like, balance and aerodynamics and something about getting the power core stable in the first place... Uh, it's all technical garbage, I don't know. Officer Mason, I am not sure this guy broke any laws. He threw a grenade at us, Elvis. Oh, yeah. Officer Mason, he may have broken at least one law. It's also illegal to trick out your motorcycle with reflective military hardware. Oh, yeah. Uh, my lawyer also talked to me about that. He said the bike was stolen, and also not to talk to you until he was present. So I kind of screwed up a lot already. Could we do a do-over? It's too late, guy. I got it all recorded. Mason, we definitely turned off the camera before we left our jurisdiction and broke into this guy's mansion without a warrant. No. No. 
Just repeat what you said when we get in the station, Mr. Molyneux, because it's already on record. And Lowry's an idiot, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't want to get yelled at by my lawyer again. How long is this ride? Like a couple of hours? Because my lawyer is going to scold me for at least that long, man. No offense, I respect your craft and all, but if I'm going to flippantly ignore my guy and say I didn't do anything wrong, I want to like have it be partially true that I didn't do anything wrong. So I think I'm going to just stop telling you guys stuff for a little bit, okay? I mean, fine, if you don't want to be cool. No, I want to be cool. I don't want us to work together, man, but my lawyer, man. You know how lawyers are, right? You deal with lawyers all the time. Well, I work in a poor part of town, so all I know is the public defender. Oh, what's he like? Tired. Always tired. Yeah, the guy jokes about suicide basically all the time. He's a huge downer. Personally, I like him. I tried to invite him to hang out once or twice, but he always cancels on me. See, Lowry, the trick is you gotta hang out with him while he works, because he's always working, see? And a lot of his clients actually are guilty, so mostly he's just doing paperwork and pleading. But once you spend about 15 minutes chatting with him about why he's never going to have kids and why everything he loves gets arrested, you realize that you're not going to hang out with him anymore. I do that, and you still hang out with me. You're my co-worker, Lowry. They pay me to hang out with you. Well, you're not being paid enough for the suffering. You deserve a raise, but we both know you're never going to get one. Are you guys not making enough to live? I've been investing some, and that's been a good side gig. Some of us have rent, Paul. And girlfriends who order out every single day. She's costing me everything, Paul. You should break up. Then I'll be alone, Paul. I'll move in with you. I need a place. No. I want a girl roommate. One that'll let me look at her boobs. So anyway, you guys get back to the station and throw Bartholomew in one of your cells. He goes, well, man, I thought you'd hook me up with a good cell. Do we have a good cell? This is as good as it gets. We don't have a good cell, Bart. This is a poor area. We barely have plumbing. Which reminds me, if you flush that toilet, make sure you jiggle the handle, otherwise it's going to run all night. Can I at least have a couch to lay down on? Do the prison cells in your area have couches? Yeah, and also Xbox, and a vending machine, and a hotline to the governor, and also one to the DA. Could I actually get your guys' DA hotline, by the way? Uh, I'll look into that. I gotta go. Alright, so, before you guys even finish the paperwork, your police chief calls you and says, Mason, you idiot! What did you do?! You're going to have to be a lot more specific, sir. I mean, why did you arrest the Molyneux boy? I just got a call from the DA, the mayor, the governor, and the president of the country. The entire department has been laid off, and now we're all on a terrorist watch list. Oh, that is a lot worse than I thought it would be. They can pull strings you didn't even know existed. Each and every one of us is now banned from the micronation of Monte Carlo. We can't join a yacht club in any part of the known world, or step foot on a golf course from this point onward. What monumentally stupid gut instinct would lead you to try to arrest one of the most powerful and influential people in the world? In fairness, sir, he seemed kind of dumb and like he was enjoying it. And let's be real, my unit is definitely a threat to the public, so maybe that terrorist thing is warranted. Well, it's all over now. I hope you're happy. You're going to have to think of a new job to burden society with from now on, Officer Mason. Sorry, sir. Hang up the phone. Well, gentlemen, we are now unemployed. Scoop up Lowry's paperwork and toss it out the window. Hey, I like doing paperwork. Well, I like throwing it out the window. How can we always do what you like to do? Besides that had personal information, I'm supposed to shred that? Well, you gotta learn to like cooler things. Like working at a bowling alley, because that might be what's in our future. Paul, is this the game? Is the game over? No, no, no. There's still the mystery of the tentacle man, and you haven't even talked to the landlord. Sit tight, I'm gonna get some more water and we'll keep going.